I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumber here again for JoeBlow.com with another video edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw, and this week we're taking a look at Mark Pellington's 1999 thriller Arlington Road starring Jeff Bridges, Tim Robbins, Joan Cusack, and Hope Davis. Now, in the 1990s, Hollywood blockbusters were a different beast. The rationale between any studio slate was wildly different than it is now. Now it has to be hit after hit after hit after hit, but back then, a studio opted for just a couple of tentpole movies each year, and usually they were star-driven vehicles with big concepts. But then, the rest of their slates would be filled out by solid singles or doubles, and of course, the inevitable flop or two. Meaning, movies that made their budgets back, or turned a profit on home video and cable, or sometimes became sleepers were the norm. And typically, the genres that were most popular for the singles and doubles were lower rent action movies starring folks like Jean Claude Van Damme or Steven Seagal, whose films pretty much bolstered Warner Brothers slate all throughout the 90s. There were also comedies, and most popular of all, thrillers, usually starring people like Gene Hackman or Michael Douglas. Now, there were all kinds of thrillers, and if any kind of movie had the potential to break out of the box office, it was definitely the thriller. Now, there are erotic thrillers like Basic Instinct and Fatal Attraction, cop thrillers like Internal Affairs, romantic or domestic thrillers like The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, and then there were the paranoia thrillers which were kind of more upper tier and more sophisticated than your typical thriller. And this week's film, Arlington Road, is a prime example of that genre. Now, when he signed on to direct Arlington Road from a script by rising writer Aaron Kruger, who would go on to have a massive career as the brain trust behind many blockbusters, director Mark Pellington was coming off of the indie drama Going All The Way, which starred a young Ben Affleck and Rose McGowan. He was still best known, though, for some truly remarkable music videos, including Pearl Jam's Jeremy and U2's One. Arlington Road was set up at Polygram Films and was shot as one of their movies. But then something very Hollywood happened. You know what? It made its, it made its money back. Mm -hmm. it, in those days, if you, could, if you made your money back, it was fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, you didn't... You, in the perception, yeah, it was interesting, it was dark, it didn't... Um, it didn't make any... It didn't make money, but it didn't hurt, you know, it didn't hurt them. And it was a European yeah. company, Polygram, that made it. Yeah. So when Polygram went under, Ron, uh, Universal took over Polygram, right? And you know, Ron Meyer saw it. He was the head of Universal. But Ron Meyer saw it and said, Barry, I'm just going to release it on home video. Oh, wow. Jeez. And Tom Rosenberg, oh, wow. who was the head, Tom Rosenberg, who was the head of Lakeshore, the company that had made it, bought it back from mm -hmm. them and then sold it to Screen Gems, and um, Clint Culpepper was ahead of Screen Gems at the time, and he was pretty ballsy, and Clint, um, Clint released it, you know, so through, through Sony and stuff like that. With Screen Gems on board, Arlington Road was given a spring release date, but then fate intervened in the form of the Columbine shooting, meaning the film, which notably contained an image of a young boy with a rifle, had to be taken off of the calendar. Yeah, we got delayed, uh, we got delayed about six months. Yeah. Uh, because of Columbine, and, um, you know, even though it had nothing to do with school, it no. was just the sensitivity yeah. to, you know, the, the subject matter and sensitivity. So, yeah, they released it in, in July, like in the summer. Despite all this, Arlington Road once eventually did hit theaters in the summer of 1999 in the wake of Star Wars The Phantom Menace and other movies that were pretty well known, like American Pie and, well, Wild Wild West, which maybe a lot of people have chosen to forget. When I roll the Wild Wild West. Did become something of a sleeper hit. It opened pretty weak at number six on the chart, but its business held relatively steady for a few weeks, and the film more or less broke even at the end of its run. Sadly, it's also a movie that's nowhere near as talked about as it should be, with iTunes and Google Play gasp only having it, at least in Canada, in a version that's panned and scanned from the scope aspect ratio to 178 to 1. Oh my god. If ever a film needed a restoration, Arlington Road is it. 
Now, I vividly remember seeing Arlington Road in theaters in the summer of 99, and it was part of what has to have been a seminal year in my film education, where as a 17-year-old, I started educating myself about what a quote-unquote real movie was. And the ending of Arlington Road, which was provocative in the extreme, blew my mind just as much as something like David Fincher's Fight Club, David O. Russell's Three Kings, Spike Jones's Being John Malkovich, or any of the other amazing movies that came out in 1999. Oh, and of course the Wachowskis, Matrix. Only human. Dodge this. Rarely had I been as challenged by a film as I was when I was watching Arlington Road. Looking at it with fresh eyes more than 20 years later, I have to say, it holds up pretty well. For one thing, the subject matter is as edgy as it was back then, with the focus on domestic, presumably right-wing terrorism and militias, with the film referencing Waco, Ruby Ridge, and the Oklahoma City bombing. Years later, our views on terrorism have surely changed, but it remains compelling and timely, perhaps even more so than it was in 1999. It ranks with the greatest paranoia thrillers, including movies like The Parallax View, Three Days of the Condor, and more. It really has the soul of a 70s film, but with the bang of a contemporary film. And you know what? It does still feel contemporary. It helps that the cast is so good. Jeff Bridges is at his everyman best as the college professor who begins to think that his neighbors, played by Tim Robbins and Joan Cusack, just might be terrorists. For a long while, you're never really sure if he's crazy or not, given the fact that his wife, an FBI agent, died in a Ruby Ridge style incident and the fact that he teaches a class on domestic terrorism. He's definitely somebody who's been unmoored by the tragedy in his life. His girlfriend, played by young Hope Davis, obviously thinks he's nuts until of course she doesn't, while his son, played by gladiator Spencer Treat Clark, is just happy to have a new best friend and his next door neighbor's son, played by my generation's Dennis the Menace, Mason Gamble who also stole scenes in the same year as Rushmore. Pellington keeps the pace tight throughout, with dynamic opening credits, beautiful shots which unfortunately are marred by the digital versions panning and scanning, and a really great score by Angelo Baldmenti and Tom Nandy. Of course, it all adds up to one of the most unpredictable and jaw-dropping finishes of the 90s, one that would be surely unthinkable in a mainstream film now, but one that also has undeniable staying power and is really damn hard to shake. Now, as I mentioned, Arlington Road is only available for rent or purchase digitally in what I believe is a pen and scan version, at least in Canada. The version I rented, sure enough, was pen and scan. And the same also unfortunately goes for the free ad supported version streaming on the CTV app in Canada. So your best bet for this movie is still the physical disc version, which you could probably get fairly cheap. It has the original aspect ratio, some good extras, and is definitely a good blind buy even if you haven't seen this movie. And if you have, you know what, Arlington Road is certainly a movie that's worth revisiting and all these years later, still a nail biter. And for some more good Mark Pellington movies, I definitely recommend The Mothman Prophecies and of course, I Melt With You. Until next time, for JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Mumbray.